Hello, everyone. I hope uh, you can hear me and see me well. Uh, my name is Andrei Kostin. I'm, I'm the CEO of Binar.io, and I warmly welcome everyone to this webinar. Uh, this webinar is particularly focused on our EU Hub for Data Open Call Project uh, IoT CESO. Uh, and I'm really happy to see uh, everyone joining today. Uh, in case of any uh, technical issues, in case you cannot hear me or you cannot see me or you cannot see my screen, please uh, let us know in the chat. Um, and our uh, my colleagues from Binari.io will try to help with that or notify me. Otherwise, I assume that um, anyone can hear me loud and clear and we can proceed forward. So a uh, quick uh, intro, I think everyone knows, or I hope that everyone knows what Binari is doing, but as a small recap, Binari is a deep tech cybersecurity spin-off from University of Ivascula, Central Finland, and it's on a mission to help secure the next billions of IoT devices. And we do so by developing cutting edge platform and technologies for analyzing cybersecurity issues and the exploitability of IoT devices, their firmware, their software, and various scenarios they are being used. Um, it is uh, our immense pleasure to be a part of a uh, European ecosystem and especially uh, being part of EU hubs for data um, project. Um, and uh, this allowed us to uh, produce uh, some really interesting re results that we would like to uh, share some of them as a teaser before our uh, white papers come out uh, from this uh, project. So let's proceed. Um, first of all, a couple of, of uh, introductory notes. Again, uh, I'll try to keep uh, this uh, um, webinar not very technical. It's <clears throat> more about disseminating this, uh, the data of this project and uh, making everyone aware about EU Hub for Data uh, Consortium and about uh, IoT CESOD uh, project from Binari. Um, so it is uh, a very high level overview of what, what we achieved and what is the entire uh, project about. So first of all, uh, EU Hub for Data is European Federation uh, of Data-Driven Innovation Hubs. And uh, this is a very important initiative and consortium in our opinion, um, as it aims to consolidate the European reference for data-driven innovation and experimentation. And data-driven innovation and experimentation exactly is at the core of IoT CESOD project, where we take uh, data into our platform, we innovate uh, technical cybersecurity in our platform and on top of the data, and we do this by experimentation so that our data can be useful for uh, further uh, industrial use or uh, research, uh, and especially being used for uh, cybersecuring IoT devices. So uh, what is IoT CESOD about uh, from Binare? Well, IoT CESOD stands from IoT Security Software Data, uh, a foundation for secure, trustworthy digital Europe and EU cybersecurity. Um, and basically, IoT CESOD project aims to run a closed loop system experiment, uh, producing cybersecurity data set, which we'll share some information about, um, namely generating complete and accurate IoT firmware software bill of materials or SBOMs and they're always up to date vulnerability mappings or CVE mappings. Um, we uh, have uh, had a couple of uh, intermediate uh, results uh, shared in our uh, social media and now uh, today we summarized uh, the, the main and biggest uh, results of this data set and again um, this data set uh, even though we look at it uh, very, very high level and not into so much detail like one by one, we have terabytes of data, we have thousands of vulnerabilities as I'll show you. So there's no point in going into this webinar uh, one by one, uh, but we will give you the big picture. Uh, why do we need uh, security software data and in particular for IoT? Well, because without uh, data-driven uh, decision-making, it is impossible to know what devices are uh, vulnerable, uh, what devices are most likely next target of uh, IoT malware or IoT botnets, and therefore having precise and accurate data about uh, the security or insecurity of those uh, softwares or firmwares um, 
will give uh, an upper hand, a leverage for the uh, good guys, for the defenders, for the ones who are aiming to protect uh, these uh, devices uh, with various innovative solutions. Okay, some uh, notices according to our um, uh, obligations, uh, and we're happy to, to share this. Uh, first, this project, uh, EU Hub for Data, and uh, subsequently IoT Sessot as a cascade uh, project, received funding from European Union Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program under Grant Agreement 951771. And more information is available at euhubsfordata.eu website. An additional disclaimer notice, all and any results, views, and opinions presented herein are only those of the authors and do not reflect the official position of the European Union or any of its uh, uh, subsidiaries, funded projects, and consortiums. So basically, the bottom line of this notice is that the results we present here are based uh, on the views and the results of the binary as we see them, as we analyze them, and does not necessarily reflect the official positions of any of these um, organizations. So um, let's let's dive a little bit into the results. Uh, what we have uh, obtained in uh, this um, experiment. So the experiment, first of all, um, was running for nine months, starting uh, May 2021 and uh, ending now January 2022. It's been uh, quite um, intensive nine months with a lot of activities and a lot of uh, support from uh, various other, our um, partners and service providers from EU Hub for Data uh, project, which I'll mention uh, towards the end of this presentation, because I want to focus this uh, webinar on our results and how, how they are useful, or at least to give you a, a big picture of what we have performed. So Overall, we uh, went on to a mission to make a big data analysis of firmers uh, and the security uh, problems with those firmers. So uh, when we talk big data, it's, um, it's basically um, can be interpreted in different way depending uh, of your background, but um, we uh, started uh, with a um, good estimate of uh, reaching 10,000 analyzed firmers um, as a good um, starting point. But at the end, uh, thanks to, to our um, strong push and also thanks to our uh, cloud infrastructure uh, supporters, uh, AGI Federation in particular, um, we had enough resources um, to uh, push more analysis and more uh, processing. So we ended up uh, pushing uh, about 14,000 firmware files, slightly uh, more than 14,000. And these uh, 14,000 firmware files, uh, they were uh, covered uh, 215 uh, vendors altogether. Uh, vendor meaning uh, companies whose label is on the particular device or firmware. Um, and altogether, um, there were uh, about 178 device types co covered in this experiment. This means router switches, wireless routers, ADSL modems, uh, uh, CCTV cameras, web cameras, uh, smart TVs, uh, industrial control systems, uh, basically all kinds of devices that are uh, IoT or industrial IoT devices. So in total, there were about 178 uh, distinct categories. Uh, some of those devices, um, their categories might be a little bit um, close to each other. In essence, uh, many of them are uh, networking uh, or embedded networking type of devices. Nevertheless, uh, they have different functionality. For example, a, a VPN uh, or a firewall embedded device uh, has slightly different roles than for, um, let's say, home or office router. And at the same time, uh, has slightly different uh, functionalities than an ADSL modem, even though functionally they are very close to each other, but still they have different functionalities, therefore, they are put in different environments and they have uh, different uh, security um, attacks uh, or threat models and security requirements uh, altogether. So this is our um, input um, data for this project. And um, some of the challenges about this was uh, to collect this data, first of all. And uh, I think there's uh, a lot of effort and um, uh, being put into collecting these firmers because uh, it is pretty uh, pretty challenging task to collect them 
in a uniform uh, systematic and methodological manner and also keeping all that meta information such as device types and vendors and categories of the devices and their version and so on and so forth. So um, in the end, what we have done, we've processed all these uh, 14,000 uh, firmware files. And again, I take a little bit step forward and mention that Binary is developing uh, a platform which is particularly focused on um, firmware analysis for cybersecurity. Um, it produces S bombs, it produces uh, security analysis re reports, and uh, pre certification for different types of uh, certification uh, requirements, such as ETSI 303645, UL 2900, IUXD Alliance, uh, and so on and so forth. So, um, the, our platform aims at full or semi full automation uh, of um, large scale analysis uh, of uh, firmware software for IoT industrial IoT devices. Therefore, we, we had uh, uh, some uh, backbone of our platform ready before the experiment. And during the experiment, we've developed uh, several um, new innovations in terms of performance improvement, in terms of uh, types of analysis, in terms of APIs and how to present data, how to search data meaningfully, as I'll show in a short live demo in the next couple of slides. Um, so, We've pushed all that data into our um, platform, again, that we uh, have developed. Uh, and overall, we have processed uh, more than 12.8 uh, million files. So the result of our processing, uh, we started with 14, uh, slightly more than 14,000 input firmware files that we have uh, analyzed and processed into uh, resulting 12.8 million files. So maybe some, uh, we have this question quite often during our uh, demos, presentations, or uh, slideshows. Uh, how do you do this? Well, uh, Binary uh, stands for, uh, if you look carefully at it, it, it is pretty much similar to binary, like binary data. Uh, in, instead of that, uh, at the end, instead of a Y, it's an E. So it is binary reverse engineering. So RE stands for reverse engineering. We are performing basically a reverse engineering of the whole compilation and the packing process. So we are um, uh, unpacking, decompiling uh, in a very simplified uh, way of speaking because it involves quite a lot of research and development and a decade of uh, lab research on uh, efficient and effective techniques to perform that. And it's part of our uh, patent pending know-how. Um, but the idea is that we perform this reverse uh, engineering to produce these 12.8 uh, million files that are part of, of uh, the whole software and firmware that actually runs on the device. Overall, uh, all the data that we've processed, uh, input and output and intermediate data and metadata and so on and so forth, have resulted uh, in uh, almost 1.5 terabytes of uh, processed data altogether, which is uh, quite, uh, quite uh, interesting and very high amount of data to be processed. And again, thanks to, uh, to EU Hub uh, for data and particular EGI Federation for providing us with um, server uh, grade storage, fast uh, server grade storage, and uh, which is a couple of terabytes um, and um, uh, the necessary amount of processing uh, CPU power and uh, RAM, uh, RAM power and storage. So uh, otherwise, these kind of experiments are not easy to run on uh, one's laptop uh, if you want to do it very effectively. Um, so to summarize, from 14,000 firmers, we um, uh, processed uh, about 12.8 million files uh, with a total uh, processing uh, data, including input, output, temporary metadata of 1.5, almost 1.5 terabytes of data. Now, uh, why we process this data, as I mentioned, okay, files by, by themselves are uh, interesting, but uh, of course we are looking for, firm, uh, for vulnerabilities in those firmers and softwares for IoT. Therefore, we look um, for various vulnerabilities in these 12.8 million files. So we analyze, we come through the data, we apply different analysis techniques and correlation techniques uh, in order to find um, uh, vulnerabilities and also to find third-party components. Um, so these third-party components, uh, for example, they are uh, lately being known as a software bill of material. Basically, it's 
kind of an ingredient list of a particular software package because the software package is never uh, or is rarely uh, is not never but is very rarely written from complete scratch there are many um, uh, uh, engineers do not reinvent the wheel they try to reuse as much as possible uh, the components so therefore there is a lot of uh, reusability of a software component um, hence uh, a particular software or firmware is basically uh, a list of uh, ingredients put together just to make a particular functionality, a CCTV camera, a baby monitor, uh, a router, and so on. So um, these uh, software bill of materials and software components uh, are very, and third party uh, components uh, are very important because of the supply chain and the, the increasing visibility of the uh, supply chain attacks uh, as we know them. Okay, so the most a uh, preeminent example that I can give you of a, of a third party or software bill of material supply chain attack is the recent log4j or log4shell uh, vulnerability that uh, if you have been following the news that has been basically um, the Christmas <laughs> gift for all the uh, cybersecurity and infosec uh, professionals out there both in terms of uh, cybersecurity drama but also in terms of uh, trying to find uh, what exactly is vulnerable, how it is being exploited, and whether a particular uh, software or company is vulnerable to this log4j. So in case you're not familiar, just uh, search for log4j vulnerability, and you'll find all the uh, news and all the uh, white papers and reports. So this is one of the examples where knowing the software components inside each of the devices is very important, because instead of uh, wondering in the dark whether is my router vulnerable or not, by looking at the data we provide, you can know at one click distance or by receiving an email alert from us that, hey, this particular device is vulnerable because we have detected uh, the um, log4j vulnerability. And in fact, we have released uh, and we found uh, using our experiment, we have found uh, certain TP-Link devices that are vulnerable to uh, the uh, log4j vulnerability exactly thanks to the data that we processed thanks to these 12.8 million files we've crunched and thanks to this 1.5 terabyte data that we've crunched if you're interested more about the uh, devices affected by the log4j vulnerabilities that we found uh, welcome to drop uh, us an email after uh, this webinar or check our uh, linkedin page or uh, blog we post all our uh, security advisory uh, PDFs and uh, we post all our um, uh, white paper PDFs on the website and our social media so you can download and check more details there or just get in touch with us for a demo or a discussion. So um, after we've crunched about 1.5 terabytes of uh, data um, in the end just to summarize um, all together they have been um, about 300,000 uh, software components being used. Uh, these are non-unique components. These are counts of the components. So um, in total, all these uh, 14,000 firmwares that we've analyzed, they use altogether um, 311,000 uh, software components. Uh, this uh, usually includes uh, various um, parts of the operating system, such as Linux kernel, drivers, let's say wireless or Bluetooth drivers for Linux kernel operating system. Um, uh, and this is also important because there have been uh, various uh, new uh, cybersecurity disclosures about uh, Bluetooth vulnerabilities in Linux kernel, um, USB uh, vulnerabilities in Linux kernel used in various devices. Uh, also, these uh, components include various types of library, libraries, for example, cryptographic libraries uh, for uh, cryptographic operations, or uh, HTTPS, TLS, SSL related libraries such as OpenSSL and so on and so forth. These are just some uh, most notorious examples, but in total they are um, uh, all together, uh, they've been using a 311,000 um, software components. So this is a quite a big number and uh, you can see that the amount of reusability and the supply chain uh, potential attack is very high because the number of, of reused components is, is really high acro across such as um, a big yet modest number of 14,000 uh, firmwares. Um, so um, in general, we've observed that uh, at least uh, at this particular point that 
uh, the maximum number of components of third party components being used per firmware is between 100 and 120 uh, components. And the median is about 29 to 30 uh, software components per firmware. So um, if you think uh, this from that perspective, let's say the medium is the representative. Again, it's all about the data set, but at uh, this size of uh, 14,000 fir firmware files and 12.8 million process files, uh, I think uh, it is um, quite representative and it's, it's, not, uh, it's within the error limit uh, and standard deviation. Uh, so um, uh, 29 uh, software components per firmware if you think about uh, about uh, 10 to 50 um, vulnerabilities uh, per component, which is, uh, I would say, a pretty optimistic estimation, then you end up uh, with about, uh, on median, uh, with about uh, 1,500 potential vulnerabilities in a particular firmware, which is a huge number. And those 1,500 uh, of potential vulnerabilities could be anything. You don't know exactly what it is, until you know the exact vulnerabilities or the exact components or the exact software component version that is used in that particular firmware. So therefore, that's why it's very important that this SBOM, which is a very exact uh, bill of material or ingredient list that we produce from that, we have all these SBOMs, meaning that we have a version number, the component name, uh, and uh, to what it is vulnerable. So we can, you know, in almost instantly, one click away, to produce any uh, potential uh, cybersecurity uh, analysis for, for the devices and firmwares we've analyzed. Um, some, more, uh, some more statistics for these uh, software components. For example, um, we uh, have analyzed and the top 100 components, uh, they basically uh, represent like uh, these uh, 100 components are the different or distinct software components, including their version they represent 55% of, of uh, this 300,000. So um, most of the vulnerabilities, or let, let's say uh, these 100 components, they bring uh, more than half of uh, the um, components in general or in this entire uh, population of uh, analysis we have performed. Uh, therefore, they bring um, uh, like, uh, a significant number of vulnerabilities into the entire uh, big picture, so to speak. Um, at the same time, uh, from these 12.8 uh, uh, million files we've analyzed, uh, we have analyzed, uh, we have detected uh, more than uh, 2,700 distinct software components, uh, including their versions. And uh, here are the top 10 components by their count. Uh, normally they, uh, they are about uh, present in, in uh, more than 3000 uh, firmware each. So it's the libcrypt, for example, is a pretty well uh, known uh, library. There's uh, PPTP, which is point to point transport protocol. It's very common for um, various networking devices, routers, modems, uh, VPNs, firewalls, uh, using uh, this PPTP, there's NTP client, which is uh, the network transport protocol, which is uh, known to have uh, quite a handful of uh, very critical vulnerabilities, and it is being used for obtaining the accurate date and time from uh, internet uh, servers. Uh, IP tables, uh, which is quite uh, often used for uh, performing various um, networking operations, network forwarding operations, or network uh, filtering slash firewalling operation. So these IP tables can be used for um, various uh, network related devices, which most of the IoT devices are uh, today. And uh, Zlib, for example, for uh, compressing the compressing data uh, that the particular device uh, is processing. And this is quite obvious why it's used because these uh, devices are pretty low resource and they don't have enough run or RAM or storage so they need to, to deal with a lot, of, a lot of the time with compressed data to save uh, resources for more critical operations. Um, okay, so this is uh, the software components part, the SBOM part. <clears throat> now, we also analyze the um, vulnerabilities part or uh, because one of the main uh, goals of this project was to um, analyze and, and basically map 
the firmwares, the, these 12.8 uh, 12 million files resulting from 14,000 firmwares uh, to map them to vulnerabilities one way or another and discover also new vulnerabilities. So uh, let's see how um, is the vulnerability uh, situation there. And as you can see, the uh, vulnerabilities or wounds or CVEs situation is not very good because uh, in these uh, 14,000 firmwares, uh, there's a total of uh, cumulative um, uh, more than 7.9 million uh, vulnerabilities altogether. These are, uh, of course, some of them are duplicate uh, vulnerabilities in uh, across different firmwares, but nevertheless, in, in total, there's uh, 7.9 million uh, vulnerabilities occurring across uh, 14,000 uh, firmwares that we've analyzed, which is a huge, huge number. Um, and we have uh, basically there's if you uh, wish, you can interpret it this way, but these uh, 14,000 firmers that uh, basically relate to 215 vendors, as we mentioned, um, there's 7.9 million ways, different ways, that these devices uh, can be uh, compromised or attacked uh, or become insecure. Okay, so there are 7.9 million ways how the attackers can try to abuse these devices which is insane number. If you think that you have to, um, you have to protect uh, such a small or relatively small number of devices from uh, 7.9 million of different attacks, uh, because every vulnerability will uh, come with as a most likely different type of attack vectors or input, uh, then uh, you clearly can see that uh, it is not possible to do with pure human effort and therefore this kind of uh, structured data that we produced in this experiment is crucial to uh, lay foundation for next generation uh, machine learning based techniques. Of course, there are machine learning uh, firewall and defense techniques, uh, but it is important to have all this data accurately processed and uh, triaged uh, and analyzed so that the next generation of machine learning techniques can use the data and try to at least assist humans in automatically um, detecting and uh, defending against these uh, 7.9 millions of uh, possible attacks. Um, then we have analyzed a little bit more uh, to see the statistics per each firmware um, and uh, the maximum number of vulnerabilities uh, varies uh, around 2000 uh, dis distinct vulnerabilities or CVEs per uh, firmware. Uh, with a median of um, uh, 1,400 vulnerabilities per firmware, which is pretty high number. So the majority of the firmware have bring with them together a lot of vulnerabilities due to the uh, large number of uh, insecure uh, or not up-to-date um, third-party supply chain components that are, we've identified in SBOM. So again, um, remember that all these um, software components, SBOM components, uh, which are 29 on a median case and 100, 120 in the max case, they all pull together their own vulnerabilities into the firmware, into the device. Therefore, uh, they um, expose uh, each firmware or each device to this, like, again, uh, very high number of vulnerabilities. Um, we also did uh, some more analysis. So uh, the top 100 vulnerabilities uh, by, by the count or by the number of occurrence in different firmwares, or um, they basically uh, represent, uh, or um, yeah, re represent by the terms of count, 7% of the total 7.9 million um, vulnerability count. So um, if, if, for example, we would have uh, or the vendor would, uh, the vendors or the responsible for cybersecurity of these devices would um, fix these hundred vulnerabilities, whether by uh, patching or updating components, um, at least 7% of the vulnerabilities or the attack vectors will be gone. So basically this number will dramatically decrease. So you can see that fixing 100 vulnerabilities in general with a very good team uh, or with uh, expertise from Binari uh, but of course it varies, it can, uh, it can go in a couple of days, it can go over a month, but of course if you put a sufficient in a number of experts, 100 vulnerabilities uh, can be fixed uh, relatively fast and uh, the decrease is dramatic 
almost 10% decrease in, in the potential uh, um, compromise vectors, okay? Um, we've analyzed uh, all these uh, CVs and vulnerabilities found or correlated to the firmers. Uh, in, uh, in total, we found uh, more than uh, 3,600 uh, distinct vulnerabilities, distinct CVEs. Uh, and uh, here's the top uh, 10 uh, vulnerabilities, some of them counting as high as uh, 5,000 uh, occurrences. So basically they occur in more than 5,000 uh, firmers, uh, which is almost half the population we've analyzed. Uh, so this is again, uh, some other uh, perspective on these uh, numbers and why this kind of big data experiment is, is really important. Um, I will uh, next uh, continue with uh, some vulnerabilities that were zero days. Now they are uh, responsibly disclose, disclosed um, and demonstrate uh, very quickly the capabilities of our system very shortly. It's not, it's not a um, uh, webinar where we show uh, the entire system, but we've also discovered uh, new vulnerabilities that uh, didn't have or don't have yet a CVE identifier. We've reported them to the vendor. Um, one such vendor is um, uh, Gigaset which is a quite big uh, vendor from, uh, from Germany, if uh, this is correct. And um, they produce uh, smart home uh, devices, smart office devices, and in particular smart phones and VoIP devices used in enterprises. Um, so we found uh, various vulnerabilities uh, in uh, some of their firmwares. Um, uh, which is uh, quite interesting. And uh, we've reported this in a responsible uh, disclosure manner. You can find uh, this security advisory on our uh, main webpage, as well as on our LinkedIn and Twitter accounts, if you're interested, or you can drop us an email for more details. So um, basically the idea, I can show you the, the report. Um, well, uh, the report is uh, six pages long. We found, um, for example, uh, AES encryption keys, uh, which is really bad because uh, this AES is symmetric encryption and once such keys are um, basically uh, released by mistake, uh, I suppose, or by some uh, bug in, in their uh, software development procedures, uh, once such uh, encryption decryption keys is, is leaked, then it can be used um, by uh, malicious actors, uh, even without the vendor knowing this. They can encrypt or decrypt or sign data with it and so on. We found various uh, hard-coded uh, passwords that are used to protect, uh, they look like random, uh, but they are already known right now. So basically they are uh, configuration files uh, that are being zipped with a password. Uh, so that uh, the configuration file of those devices uh, if, uh, cannot be used by uh, some, someone else uh, than the um, vendor's support team or by uh, the administrators of those devices. However, now with these passwords being hard-coded, it's quite, uh, quite easy to uh, start recovering the configuration information. And that configuration information, again, is very important because it contains uh, usernames and passwords to other services such as Wi-Fi service, uh, email services, FTP services, and any other uh, internal uh, enterprise level um, uh, credentials such as uh, Active Directory or uh, AD, LD, AP, LDAP, um, and so on and so forth. So um, basically we found quite quite some many uh, vulnerabilities and we, we also presented them with uh, overall uh, security analysis from our platform, thanks to this, uh, the innovations we've developed in, in this EU hub project uh, and giving them a dashboard, a view of how many vulnerabilities they have and how many software components, uh, how many crypto material we have recovered from the file and so on. Um, but one, one interesting feature of our uh, platform uh, I try to show you uh, right now. So as I mentioned, we have uh, more than 14,000 uh, firmware um, images. And um, basically uh, we uh, can analyze them and see uh, what they have, a uh, number of unpacked files, number of vulnerabilities. Um, we also have uh, quite, um, quite good uh, and very uh, flexible filtering criteria for, for example, um, it would be really uh, cumbersome to go in this short webinar time to go and search for that particular firmware uh, 
uh, that I wanted to show. So we can uh, quickly just uh, try to use this nice filtering so we can check by vendor and we can set, uh, I want all the analysis from a giga set, for example. And uh, you will see that <clears throat> it is pulling about uh, 37 uh, firmware results, which I hope the demo gods are not against us uh, today and everything goes okay. Oh, let's wait a couple more, uh, <clears throat> couple more seconds. Okay, uh, so yeah, I think there is some some uh, cache caching thing, or at least the data was not cached anyway. Um, so we have the, the Gigaset vendor uh, about uh, thirty seven uh, firmwares. Um, and for example, if we look this particular one that we've uh, told, uh, we can say, okay, uh, we want uh, the firmware file name also to be like this. So we immediately, we very, with a couple of clicks and couple of filtering, we isolate or we identify the exact uh, firmware. And uh, for example, uh, I can open a new tab and uh, go here. So um, I can go to the file list and for example, quickly see, uh, let's say one of these vulnerabilities um, such as uh, that base hard-coded key. So I can check uh, this file and quickly identify it like this. Uh, then it's immediately identified and we can see the contents and you can see, okay, this is inside. Now, uh, it is very interesting that, okay, now you may, uh, the next uh, thing that usually the cybersecurity analysts uh, or uh, specialists do, uh, the same what uh, hackers do, okay, are there any other devices or firmwares that are vulnerable to the same? Because once a vulnerability is found, uh, the attackers or the pen testers, they want to use uh, the same vulnerability, but they've spent a lot of effort finding to try to see how many other devices they could potentially compromise, okay? So usually the first question, what are the other uh, devices? What are the other firmwares uh, that are vulnerable to the same uh, vulnerability? So we can do a couple of things, for example, with our uh, quite, uh, quite nice um, uh, platform. So we can see, take the MD5 of this file that we know is vulnerable, okay? And we can then uh, go and do something like this. We can, uh, uh, let's say, remove everything. Okay, we are back to 14,000 files. And then we can see, okay, the unpacked uh, file MD5 is exactly this. So you can see that suddenly we have an indication that there are three firmwares. Okay, so normally, here we initially reported just this firmware uh, file name, but now uh, after analyzing that, hey, this file has this MD5, basically this is the vulnerable file or the, the core of a vulnerability. Let's try to search if there's any other firmware that contains this MD5 inside. And we filtered that unpacked file with MD5 equals this. And then we see that there are a couple more firmwares from the same vendor, of course, I would be surprised otherwise, um, but are vulnerable as well. So we should, and we will update after this webinar, uh, we'll update the uh, security advisory and the vendor, but this vulnerability, is, uh, this vulnerability um, affects these firmware versions as well. So uh, if we want to, um, for example, um, double check, we can see the other firmware, uh, but we've recently correlated. So you can think of this as a correlation where we try to use uh, a vulnerability that is known. Uh, we've discovered it, maybe it's a well-known CVE vulnerability, maybe it's a vulnerability such as the one we've discovered with AES encryption key. And then uh, we can um, then see, okay, 
okay, yeah, indeed, this is a different firmware. You can see the file name is different. It's a kind of a Russian market a specific release of uh, this firmware version 3.13.13 uh, for this Maxwell 2 slash 3B model, which is a professional enterprise grade VoIP phone. And we can see that um, the key is like that. And this is very important now uh, that I'm here, but it is important sometimes to search by different criteria. MD5 is very important uh, criteria or the hash of the file because in the original firmware, you can see that the file name is max free b key as so if i would have searched by this file name maybe i wouldn't found uh, would have not found the correlated firmware but because i've searched by the hash of the vulnerable file uh, i was able to to find it even though it has a different name key.as right so the key.as file has the same content yet it has a different name than uh, the max free b underscore key.as. So we have a lot of, uh, again, uh, we have a lot of filtering criteria here in the unpacked file list. And we also have a lot of filtering criteria um, here uh, in, in the, um, the whole analysis uh, space. So there's a lot of innovation, how we did it. And uh, there it, it makes the finding of vulnerabilities so much easier and correlation of known and unknown vulnerabilities so much easier and finding the uh, new potentially vulnerable devices in a couple of clicks and a couple of seconds. Um, yes, so uh, let me get back. So I think that was kind of uh, the main thing to showcase uh, the vulnerabilities we have found uh, and how our uh, innovative technology and innovative uh, platform helps with that. Um, and I'm trying to be wary of the time. I think it's also a very good time to go to the acknowledgement, um, which uh, again, no particular order, everyone's contribution during this project was very uh, instrumental and it was very crucial uh, to the success of this project. Uh, we start with a uh, no center uh, member uh, and in particular, Barbara Angelika Christoph. Uh, and no center is a leading European research center for big data. And they also have been uh, the lead mentor of uh, IoT CESO project. Thank you, uh, everyone at Node Center. Um, also, we would like to acknowledge and thanks uh, EGI, EGI Foundation, in particular, Elisa, Andrea, and Levente. Uh, EGI is a federation of uh, more than 200 resource providers offering com compute, storage, and data infrastructure. And again, um, it was uh, extremely crucial uh, support in terms of computing and resources. Uh, otherwise, we would not have been able to uh, process so much data and be able to experiment to make this kind of uh, search, filtering, and correlation so much uh, real time uh, and uh, achievable. Uh, thanks, CGI. Uh, we also thank uh, CIADAR, uh, in particular, Ricardo, Andres, Aditya, and Vivek. Uh, they uh, provide strategic uh, support in terms of uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning and any other uh, type of innovative uh, proof of concept technologies, applied proof of concept technologies. Uh, thanks Siadar for supporting. And uh, last but not least, um, uh, ETI, who is um, managing uh, the, um, um, uh, at least the open call and um, many uh, work packages uh, and onboarding and dissemination. And in particular, thanks to Daniel, Guillermo, Guillermo, Vanessa and Sandra for supporting our activities in IoT uh, CESO project. There are many others uh, uh, not mentioning the sites. Uh, this doesn't make them uh, less uh, worthy of our thanks. Thank, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, the list is quite long, uh, but uh, I hope you all know who you are, whether it's a um, participant from EU Hub for Data project uh, or uh, the, our friends and uh, peers who support uh, or engage with IoT CESO project directly and indirectly. So again, uh, thanks, uh, thanks to all. Uh, some uh, fair use media uh, um, notice, some of these uh, material used from uh, courtesy of flat icon uh, and also the logos are um, owned by their uh, respective owners. So uh, to uh, try to summarize uh, this webinar, 
Um, there will be a white paper public soon. Again, in a webinar, it's hard to go through uh, 12.8 million uh, of files and 7.9 million vulnerabilities and do a demonstration for each of them. But the data is huge. The findings are really eye-opening and relevant. Uh, so the white paper will contain it more in a white paper format. Uh, in order not to miss it, we warmly welcome everyone to uh, follow us on LinkedIn, on Twitter, uh, on our um, blog uh, by subscribing to our uh, newsletter. It is a very low traffic, uh, not spammy at all um, uh, newsletter coming directly to your inbo inbox with uh, hot IoT uh, security content. Um, also, if you have any particular inquiries about uh, IoT CESOD project, just drop us an email uh, at this iot cesod at binary.io uh, and uh, follow our uh, channels for, for updates on the white paper. Um, and again, I thank everyone who has facilitated this project. I thank everyone uh, who facilitated this webinar, in particular the entire uh, awesome team at Binare. Um, and um, yeah, thanks uh, also to everyone who attended. And I hope it was an interesting webinar. Um, and I hope to hear from you, whether at this email addresses, whether engaging with us on social media. Um, we will also be releasing this uh, webinar as a recording. So you can share with your uh, peers, colleagues, or whoever you think uh, would be interested in seeing these slides. Thank you uh, again, and uh, I hope you have a very good 2022, a health, uh, healthy one, a safe one, and uh, back to normal one, I hope. So thank you, everyone, and until next time, stay safe, stay secure, and um, follow, uh, follow with us the latest IoT cybersecurity news. Thank you so much, everyone.